CPU performance. So overall CPU time is defined as seconds per program. How many seconds it takes to execute a particular program? That's nothing but performance. That can be calculated through this formula. How many instructions are there? So number of instructions per program, whatever the applications we write, eventually the compiler is going to convert the application or program into instructions. So how many instructions are there? That's nothing but number of instructions per program multiplied by CPI, clock cycle per instruction. How many clock cycles needed to execute a particular instruction? That's nothing but cycle per instruction. That's multiplied by seconds per clock cycle. This is nothing but frequency. We are familiar with this. Clock period, how many seconds per clock cycle? So the CPU time is calculated using this formula. Instructions per program multiplied by clock cycle per instruction multiplied by seconds per clock cycle. And overall the performance depends on various parameters. Algorithm, algorithm decides how many instructions could be there. So based on the algorithm we choose to implement a particular software application decides how many instructions it's going to demand and also the choice of programming language. So there is a difference between C and C++. C++ might demand less number of instructions because it, it is based on object-oriented programming. So you can achieve reusability. That might not be possible in C. So the language defines number of instructions per program. Also the compiler, it depends on how we design the compiler. If the compiler is efficient enough to produce less number of instructions, yes, it will have huge impact on instruction count. But if you look at ISA, instruction set architecture, which is the definition for both compiler and the processor design, it controls everything, instruction count, CPI and clock rate. When it comes to hardware, we can look at how to improve the performance of the hardware. So we can always look at how to reduce the clock period. If we can reduce the clock period, which is nothing but seconds per clock cycle, we should be able to improve the frequency. So if we can improve the frequency, we would be able to execute more number of instructions. That's what we can achieve through hardware design. That's where we can also look at pipelining, how we can implement pipeline processor, multi-stage pipeline processor. All right. Let's look at the difference between high level and assembly language. Languages like C, C++, Java, System Verilog, we use these high level languages to create software applications. But when we see assembly, it would be RISC-V or ARM or x86 instruction set. And in high level language, we always use complex data structure like struct, class and array, pretty straightforward. But in assembly, everything is going to be like bits or bytes. Sometimes they could be like word or integers. In high level language, we can define complex controls like if else, nested if else, for loop, while loop. But in assembly, we have few options like control transfer instructions, could be branch and jump. So we have to implement all kinds of loops like for loops and while loops through these control transfer instructions. And high level language supports all arithmetic and logic operations. Assembly programming also supports arithmetic and logic instructions. High level language suitable for creating software applications. Could be UVM Testbench or Verilog RTL or mobile apps. But assembly programming 
reflects IAC. So it's primarily used for compiler design or it's primarily used for hardware design. RISC-V instruction set architecture. It's an open source instruction set architecture from Berkeley. There are privilege levels like user mode, machine mode, supervisory mode. We use user mode primarily to implement a simple embedded systems, microcontroller or IoT connectivity devices. But when it comes to implementing complex secure systems, we always prefer either machine mode or supervisory mode. And RISC-V IESA is available with different flavors like RV32 or RV64 or RV128. So here 32 bits, 64 bits or 128 bits, they are nothing but register width. And there are different subsets like integer instructions, multiply and divide, arithmetic extension, and single and double precision floating point subset. So based on the requirement, we can think of implementing all these subsets. And there could be many other extensions. This is how you can visualize the instruction set architecture. It defines the main components like register file, arithmetic logic unit, and memory. So the memory is going to have both instruction and data. Everything is going to be 32 bits. That's what I explained initially. Whatever the assembly program basically we write, everything is going to be converted into 32 bits. That's nothing but machine language and that's stored in the memory. And in memory, we do byte addressing. So it's going to be like 0, 4, 8, 12. And then there is a register file. So overall 32 registers and each register has 32 bits. 32 is something special for risk file. So when we say RV32I, what it means is a risk file 32 bits integer instructions. So here there are 32 registers. And there is an ALU, it performs all kinds of operations. And whenever it produces the results, sometimes it writes the results into register and sometimes it writes the results into memory. So we need different kinds of instructions to support the data flow. R and I type instructions. R means register type, I means immediate type, and these are all various instructions that happens primarily between registers and ALU. In case we need to implement the data flow between registers and memory, we need additional instructions like I and S type instruction. And we also need other type of instructions for control flow. There are B type, J type instructions primarily for changing the uh, sequential execution order. It doesn't have to be always sequential. Sometimes we need non-sequential execution primarily to realize while loop or for loop or if you want to implement conditions like if else or nested if then we need instructions like B type and J type. This is how you can visualize a risk for ISA. So if you consider RV32I instruction set, a RISC-V 32 bits integer instruction set, primarily there are six types, R type register to register instruction, I type immediate instructions, S type store, B type branch, J type jump and link, and U type load or add upper immediate. These are all various types. And RISC-V IAC defines the format of each instruction. You need to be familiar with this. If you want to implement the processor, you should be really familiar with the type of instruction. Each type is different. This is what we are going to discuss in this course. And what are the various instructions supported under each type? So overall, 39 instructions under a RISC-V 
32 bits integer subset. So RB 32I base integer instructions, if you consider there are overall 39 instructions. So there are types like R type and I type instructions and S type, B type, J, U and I type. Register file, there are 32 registers. We need to implement 32 registers to realize risk 5 processor. It's called register file. X0, it's hardwired to 0, so it will always be 0. We use X0 to initialize the registers. If you are going to use different kinds of registers or intermediate registers, sometimes we need to initialize the variables. So in that case, we can assign X0 to those variables. So it will be very useful. Overall 32 registers and each register 32 bits, X0 is hardwired to 0. This is how it looks like 32 registers and uh, we use registers like temporary registers or some of the registers dedicated for global pointers, some of the registers are dedicated for stack pointer. That's how basically we try to use all the registers when it comes to execution. That's primarily needed for compiler, how the compiler is going to make use of these registers. Risk five memory, you need to understand the memory structure. Each element 32 bits and it follows byte addressing. So addressing happens like 0, 4, 8. So each element is composed of four bytes. The addressing will always be byte addressing. And the address bus width is 32 bits. So it can address maximum two to the power 32 elements.